Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I would love to talk to you about Pokemon Adventure. Uh, looks like the books are keying. Um, I have been reading this for a long time. It's taken me over two years, maybe four years to actually complete the uh, what was it? The red, blue, and yellow, and I guess technically green, and the gold, silver, and crystal, like, arcs, I guess. This series, I, I'm i so unbelievably surprised. Granted, I've heard good things about it prior, but I'm so unbelievably surprised how much fun and how interesting and how cool this series is. This manga series it's 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 so much more than what you see in the games. Now, I actually started reviewing the series way back. Uh, I think it was like 2018 or something like that. It was when I first started reviewing manga in general on this channel. And at the time, I was just kind of like I had read a chunk of it. And then I went back and reviewed and it felt awkward and weird. And it was just weird because it was like, oh, I had the whole thing. And then... I don't, I don't know, unlike the weekly manga like One Piece or Black Clover or whatever, where it's like, oh, I have to wait. It felt awkward to, like, try to review something that I'm reading multiple chapters at a time. So I never really got into reviewing it. And then my in, I, I'm so, so bad at keeping up with certain things. It, again, it took me all that time to get to the end of the gold and silver and crystal arc, which, my God, <laughs> can I just say... I, I really, really liked the the original, like, Kanto-related arc, but I really, 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 really liked the gold and silver stuff. Mwah. I actually think it's funny because it's like, I've got, like, I found this background um, that I think it was from, like, official, like, uh, an official event or, like, a special thing, but this is clearly from, like when heart gold and soul silver came out because you've got like what is it you've got you've got gold in his in his ethan outfit and then uh i was gonna call her lyra lyra uh crystal is in her <laughs> is in her lyra outfit and then silver well he kind of just looks about the same but i have not read past the gold and silver and crystal art this is the last volume that i even own i am so excited to start the ruby and sapphire stuff but that'll come at some point. But I wanted to talk about Pokemon Adventures as a and what exactly it means for the series, whether it be expanding on lore or opening up new doors for storytelling with Pokemon, with the original stories in general that you take from the game, but adding a new twist to them. Now, there's a part of me that doesn't want to be like, oh, spoilers up in front of everything, because I if you have not read this manga you really need to get into it. But there's also a part of me that's like, yo, I gotta talk about some stuff. So what I will say is I won't go into any major specifics, but there will definitely be some some spoilers in here and like kind of major spoilers. So maybe go read the manga and then come back here and hear my own thoughts. So what do I love about this series? Well, first, again, like I've mentioned, it adds a twist to the original stuff. So you've got you've got red here, right? You go on an adventure in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, and Green, technically, but not in the West. Um, and you play, and you gather all the badges, and then you go up against the Elite Four, and you become the champion. The series puts everything on its head, making the Elite Four evil, and some of the gym leaders evil. And there's a whole, basically a war over... I, I, I actually don't, it's been a while since I've read the original arc, but like, there's a whole thing where they're like working for like Team Rocket and you, you have this build up to a big battle with the Elite Four and you've got like people like Misty and Brock who are like, okay, the main characters, uh, red, blue and, and green, uh, they've got to go off and kind of like handle stuff. And I especially love the idea that, like, the Pokemon League is more of a tournament at the end. Everybody, I mean, it's it's kind of like the manga in that sense. But, like, you don't you don't just go up against uh, <laughs> the Elite Four, like, in the games. There's a tournament at the end, and Professor Oak was, like, the original winner of the tournament or something along those lines. 
I love that. I love the twists and turns and and just so much. There's so much depth to the series. And not only that, but the battles. Oh, my God. If you have not seen an Arbok get cut in half by a Charmeleon, get ready. And that's just the Kanto protagonist's journey and all of their stuff. What they do with the gold, silver, and crystal characters is maybe even more interesting, in my opinion. Gold here? I don't... I don't think he even collects any badges. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> there's like, you would think, oh, the main character is going to be like, oh, he's at least going to collect the badges. I don't think he, maybe he goes against one gym or something like that. I, but like at the end of the day, he has nothing to do with the final tournament, which is a tournament of gym leaders, mind you. And so, so like, oh my God, <laughs> not only that. But I love the idea that over the course of both thing, both arcs, because basically it's it's all one story, right? Uh, it's one story in the games, but it's also more or less one story with them, with older, with the older trainers coming back and helping out the newer trainers. And I I, I love that by the end, you kind of learn a little bit about all of the characters, and they all embody something specific about Pokemon. I I just absolutely love the idea that you can tell a story, you can use the original framework of the games, and then tell a brand new story that's almost got nothing to do with it. It this these this manga is like it's almost a brand new, fresh story that brings so much more to the table than just oh, red and gold are going to go and do the gyms, and then that's it. Uh, like, think about Ash. Ash in the anime. Yeah, he's got his own, like, stuff going on, but, like, at the same time, outside of, like, Pokemon Journeys, which everybody's having a little bit of an issue with that, and, and even, honestly, Sun and Moon, other than those where things are a little bit different, He's largely just been on the same path as you would play the normal games. But instead, with these characters, there's a lot more depth. You have characters who Red does Red at the end of it all doesn't really even he just wants to be the strongest, but that's not necessarily but he's not necessarily looking to be the champion. It was a means to an end. While Gold just wants to be friends with a bunch of Pokemon. He left home, but he, it's not like he was gonna be like, okay, I guess I'm gonna take on the gyms. He just kind of went on an adventure, which Kind of goes with the name of the book, right? Meanwhile, somebody like Crystal is an avid catcher of Pokemon. Her thing is about catching Pokemon, doing it in a very unique way. I think she, like, kicks the balls and stuff like that at, at the Pokemon. There's a lot of weird stuff with that. Me meanwhile, there's a lot of depth with, like, Silver and uh, Blue. I think her name is Blue in the manga. I forget. Uh, it, might, it might be green. The point is, the two of them... They got something going on. So I love that they all have their different experiences that kind of touch and 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 twist and turn around the the basic frameworks of the Pokemon games. It is a much more complicated story than 10-year-old leaves home to go and win the Pokemon League and then coincidentally takes on the bad guys while he does it. There's a lot more nuance and it's 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 I mean, it's it's basically like what if Pokemon originated as a standalone anime of its own kind, like a shonen. And I love that there's a lot of continuity to it. Like I said, all these characters kind of come and go as as you read through the story, but they're not gone. They still exist in the same story. It's just that they're not there. And that makes for awesome re-entrances with like red showing up at the 11th hour even just even though he's been gone for forever and that's the other thing it's not just following the like main protagonists i mean granted they're all technically protagonists but like you follow you follow green gary whatever whatever his name is you follow you follow the rivals uh for for multiple chapters on end you follow different storylines in which in which like crystal is going to look for suicune and and you you follow even the gym leaders to a degree without even without seeing like for instance red for chapters on end like he is not in a large chunk of the story like physically at least on screen they talk about him a lot but he's he's gone for a long time and that's so interesting and it's really that non-linear storytelling that i think does this series as a whole a lot of respect a lot of justice because if you're going to tell all of these different stories and have them all come together in the end, you have to at least give the reader something to 
to really grasp onto, to really sink their teeth in. And I think most, if not all of them, have compelling stories uh, to be told. I genuinely can't wait to get to like the fire red and leaf green uh, series. Uh, I'm going to read everything as it came out. So next comes up Ruby and Sapphire and maybe Emerald. I don't know what the continuity with that is because I think fire red and leaf green came out before Emerald. Um, but I'm going to read it in the continuity that it came out. Uh, and, and we'll see how things go. I can't wait for Fire Red and Leaf Green so that I can see what they're doing there. I can't wait for the stuff involving Heart Gold and Soul Silver because I'm interested to see how they kind of fold that stuff in given that, like, the main storylines of, of the original games is over. I've heard Ruby and Sapphire is very good and I'm excited to get into that. At some point, I'm gonna, buy, I'm gonna buy the, the, the whole set for that. Um, but let me know what you guys think about Pokemon Adventures. How, how how far have you read? Have you read up until the most recent stuff? I will say the most disappointing thing is it seems like at least Viz. I don't know if it's like something involving like the releases in Japan. It sounds like there's a lot of inconsistencies with releases and how volumes come out. Um, since it's not like a weekly manga, I don't think. It, they just kind of release it whenever it's ready. And then there's like stuff where like the black and white and uh, the black and white manga finished like two years ago, even though they were well into like the sun and moon manga. I, I don't know. It sounds like there's a lot of weird overlap. So I'm not looking forward to catching up entirely to that stuff. But I am super, super excited to get to the next arc, see how everything folds in together. Maybe the maybe the Ruby and Sapphire characters will meet this cast and I'll get to see every, how everybody interacts. I'm excited. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about Pokemon Adventures. Uh, don't spoil too much. <laughs> don't spoil anything. Uh, I just, I wanna hear what other people have to say about this manga. I think it's super, super special. And if you have not read it, uh, I don't, I mean, I've spoiled, I guess, some stuff for this, but, uh, but if you have not read it, regardless of whether I've spoiled you on stuff, go read it because there's a lot more to it. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed anything I had to say and want to see more Pokemon related content, specifically Pokemon adventures, make sure to like and subscribe. That way you won't miss out whenever I upload. I will see you guys hopefully very soon in another video. See you later.